Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Real Sports Updates here. Back again with another video. Um, so yesterday, there was news that broke that didn't surprise anybody, especially Chargers fans. The Chargers are declining the fifth year option for uh, defensive tackle Jerry Tillery. Um, and again, this is not surprising to anybody. Um, you know, I think this was the right move to make, obviously. Um, you know, I, I think his option was about 10, million, 10 to $11 million or something like that. Um, obviously, you know, the, the Chargers were not going to cover that. And, um, you know, I kind of wanted to break down why this fifth year option was declined um, and ultimately why Tom Telesco failed uh, with this uh, draft pick. Um, now, I'm not going to pile on it. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to you know, insult him and, and, and things like that. You know, I just want to get into what the numbers say and what, you know, this guy is actually doing on the football field. Um, so Jerry Tillery in his in his entire career, uh, three years so far, 98 tackles, nine and a half sacks, uh, 12 tackles for loss. Um, you know, those numbers are not blowing anybody away. Um, they're also not like super terrible either. Um, you know, I don't want anybody to get the impression that this Jerry Tillery is a, uh, uh, a terrible player or whatever or somebody who doesn't deserve to be in the league um i think he's far far from that but you know he was taking what he was taken with a first round pick uh the draft what three four years ago um and even at the time this was a puzzling pick to me um but you know i'm always optimistic and i, I always am a guy you know we will Let's see what he does on the field. I'm never a guy that's going to say, oh, you know, this is a terrible pick. You know, we can't. No, you, football is, is is such a weird sport, right? There's guys who come from very small schools who are able to ball out in the league, right? They're able to, to, to you know, whatever it is, you know, they're able to, to catch up with the speed of the game. They're able to, you know, understand what they need to do to succeed. Like, there's guys who come in and do that all the time, right? And Jerry Tillery comes from a big college, Notre Dame. So I was always at the mindset, let's go out there, let's, let's let him play, let's let him, you know, even if he's not good to begin with, you know, let's let him improve, let him understand the game a little more, and then we'll see where he's at. Um, but for this particular situation, I don't think that Jerry Tillery is in, I don't think he's in the, the cards as far as a long-term um, player for the Chargers. Um, and, you know, that's one of the things Tom Telesco said that, that you know, even though the Chargers are declining his fifth-year option, that Jerry Tillery is still on the long-term plans um, of the Chargers. And, you know, as much credit as I give Tom Telesco all the time, I think that that is just a bold-faced lie um, for many reasons. Um, Jerry Tillery is not, he does not, first and foremost, the this Staley defense, he, he's not somebody that fits it very well. Um, I think Jerry Tillery is a 4-3 defensive tackle. Um, you know, I think he's also, he's, he's athletic as well, too. So he's also able to play in, um, you know, depending on the situation and down and distance and stuff like that. Um, but I think he, he would, I think he would fare a lot better in a traditional 4-3 defense. And that's something that the Chargers did play for a few years. Um, you know, he, his rookie year was really, you know, it, it, it wasn't great. Um, you know, but he did improve a little bit the, the following year. And that's something that I do give him credit for. Now, this daily defense really doesn't suit what he does um, very well. Um, he is a much, much better pass rusher than he is a run defender. Um, and he doesn't really have a place in this defense, the 3 4, the multiple defense. Um, he doesn't really have a place because he's not fast enough to stand up on the outside. Um, but you know, he also is taking on double teams and, uh, you know, on the inside. Um, so I, I, he just really doesn't fit that well. You know, it's kind of putting, uh, uh, you know, a square peg into a circular hole. Like it, it, he just doesn't quite fit. And I think, you know, that has to do with, you know, some of the lack of production on his part. I think another thing too, I think he just really hasn't picked up the game as well, or I think he hasn't really improved um, what he needed to improve, you know, as far as his run stopping ability, you know, he has to be better stopping the run. You know, you cannot just be a run trick pony. You know, there's not too many 
um, positions in the NFL for guys like that. You know, especially on the defensive line. You know, you need to be able to obviously rush the passer, but you need to be able to get off blocks and you need to be able to, you know, stop guys um, running the ball, you know, and he, he's, he doesn't really do that very well. You know, every time I watch him, he is, he's, he's a tall guy, he's six foot six, um, and he plays really high. His pad level is always high. Um, and he doesn't play with a lot of leverage, even though he is a big, strong guy. So, you know, technique wise, I, I, I don't think that he is, um, where he needs to be. And, you know, I think he does have to take the responsibility for that for his part. Um, but you know, it's just a bad, it's a bad marriage when, you know, he's not, he's really not improving the way that he should individually. And then you have a defense that really doesn't, um, have a, a spot for him. Then you have, you know, a, a, a marriage that really doesn't work. Um, so I do think that Jerry Tillery probably will be suited, you know, better off somewhere else that, you know, somewhere else where he can accentuate his strengths, which is rushing the passer. Um, and I think we all know, we can all say that he, he never should have been a first round pick. Um, I remember looking at some of the drafts back then, some of the, the mock drafts, and I think he had a second or third round grade, I believe. Um, it, it was a reach by, uh, Tom Telesco. Very, very, very much so. Um, very much to the point where I was just like, wait, who, who? Jerry Tillery. And I, I remember, you know, seeing him, but, you know, second and third round grade, I was not expecting it. So... Again, it th this was pre this you know this days back pre Staley and all that stuff. So, but still, I it, it just it wasn't a great that wasn't a great draft and it wasn't a great draft pick by by Tom Telesco. And I think we can all if you were an an objective um, Charger fan, if you're an objective NFL objective uh, sports fan in general, you can say that hey you know we my team really didn't hit this one out of the park. So. And I think we can say that. And I think Jerry Tillery knows this. I think he understands it as well, too. Um, but I do think that he does have a place in the NFL. I think he is a rotational piece. I think he's a rotational lineman. I don't think that he is a guy who's going to be starting a lot of games. Um, you know, I think he, he can come in on, you know, in third down situations, um, you know, goal line situations when they bring the heavy package out. You know, I think he, he can, you know, do some things there. But I don't think that he's an every down lineman. Um, you know, he just hasn't shown that ability for the Chargers. And, you know, it 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 sucks because he was a first round pick, but you know, sometimes guys get, you know, pigeonholed because you are a first round pick and you had that attached to you for the rest of your career. Oh, you're a first round pick, you're a first round pick, um, and you get the the bust uh, you know, you get the bust thing attached to your name and it's not even necessarily his fault, like Again, he shouldn't have even been a first-round pick. So, would he have done better if he was a second or third-round pick? I mean, maybe, possibly, right? You, because the 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 pressure is not on you, right? You're not the the first-round pick. You know, you're not the guy on the telecast where, like, oh, you know, he is the Chargers' first-round pick, and they have to kind of punch you out. And they pretty much do that for every team, you know. Um, no matter what what station, you know, the t your team is playing on Fox, CBS, ESPN, whatever, they normally go and they'll they'll profile, you know, a team's first round pick from from that that year's draft, and um, you know that comes with a lot of pressure, you know. And if he was a second or third round pick, I I do think he probably would have done a little better, you know. The pressure is off, and he would be able to develop kind of at at his own pace, right? You don't have the the fifth year option is not a thing and you know having your option decline and all that stuff and you know having people talk about it and all that you know he would have a lot less pressure if he wasn't a first round pick so again that part is not even his fault so um you know he's a guy you know he's, he's been trying his best to to come along and and you know trying to develop and try, just trying to do what he can you know he seems like a good teammate he seems like a good guy um but again, the first round tag, the first round tag gets, gets attached to you all the time. And, you know, and it happens to a lot of players. And, you know, if you're not able to succeed at a first round level, you know, put up the stats that a first rounder does or have the impact that a, a typical first round draft pick has, then you, you kind of get labeled, um, you know, the rest of your career. And it, it is unfair and it does suck. Um, I think there is a chance that he does get cut though. Um, in training camp, you know, especially with the Chargers drafting the uh, uh, defensive lineman from from uh, UCLA, uh, Otito o o Obagnia, I think his name is. Um, you know, he's he's a big guy and he fits 
exactly what Brandon Staley wants to do with the defense um, is. You know, he's a big dude. He's a big nose tackle who is used to playing, um, you know, in a similar type of defense. They didn't run the exact same defense at U UCLA, but he did take on a lot of double teams, um, you know, and he will be in the middle taking on double teams, you know, trying to free up Bosa and uh, Khalil Mack and stuff. Um, so that's what he will be doing, and he is more adept at that than Jerry Tillery is at this point right now. So I think there is a chance that Jerry Tillery doesn't make the opening day roster. Um, he is in the last year of his contract. Um, all of his guaranteed money is, you know, has been paid to him. Um, and he would only be a $2.7 million cap hit if he was cut. Um, so I think there is a possibility that that can happen. Um, you know, I'm not sure, you know, we'll have to see what happens when, when training camp, you know, winds down and, you know, you start getting into the, the, the cut, you know, the, the 50, the, the cutting down of the, um, 53 man roster. So. There is a possibility he could be on the bubble and he might not be a charger, you know, when the, se the actual season starts. So I think everybody should should keep that in mind as well, too. And don't be surprised if it does happen when it when it happens. Um, but yeah, man, it, it's, it's just it's, it's not good. You know, it, it's not a good situation for Jerry Tiller. I think he would do a lot better um, elsewhere. Um, last but not least, just the, the final point. Last season, um, Pro Football Focus. They graded Jerry Tillery 49.5 um, player uh, rating. And if you're not familiar with Pro Football Focus, you guys should definitely subscribe. They have a lot of stuff, um, a lot of analytical stuff. Um, you know, they break down plays, they break down games, they break down throws, whatever, you know, in, anything you can want, they do a lot of that stuff. Um, and you can learn a lot of football. Like I've learned a lot, you know, ever since I've been subscribed to uh, Pro Football Focus. So. You guys should subscribe if you are interested in learning a little more. But Jerry Tillery, 45.9 um, PFF ranking last season, um, 2021. So if you're not familiar with the ranking system, I will, I will let you in on it a little bit. So Jerry Tillery was 45, uh, 45.9, right? So let's just say 46. So um, 90 to 100 is an elite level player. So if a player is ranked between 90 and 100, they're elite. They're considered elite, right? 85 to 89 is a Pro Bowl player, right? So again, you're talking about the upper echelon of the NFL. Um, 70 to 84 is a starter in the NFL. So that's just your everyday average starter, right? Not a Pro Bowler, um, not a superstar, but your average starter in the NFL, 70 to 84. Uh, 60, to 69 ranking would be a backup. So anybody would that's considered a backup probably falls between that rank, 60 to 69. And zero to 59 is a replaceable player. So basically, you know, like a camp body or whatever, they, that person is replaceable on a team. So that's pretty much what the ranking system is. Pro Football Focus had 40, Jerry Tillery had a 49, 45.9. So it, it is far below the 59, um, you know, threshold or the 60 threshold to be a backup. So he, they have him as a, a clearly replaceable player on the team. Um, and again, it's not great as a first round pick because you have that attached to you. But if the Chargers, you know, are interested in, you know, maximizing this team, right. And not getting attached to players and not having emotional attachments or whatever, um, the, the pro football focus ranking tells you that, you know, he should be replaced. Um, and I think there are steps were taken to replace him in the draft, obviously. You know, I just mentioned, um, you know, the brand new nose tackle from UCLA. Um, but these rankings are based off of, you know, the guys at pro football focus breaking down every single play that a player has played in the season. Uh, so this is the most recent ranking. So this is, this stuff is not out of date. Um, it's not, you know, narrative based. It's not based off of, you know, emotion or anything like that. They're watching what he does um, as a defensive tackle. They're breaking down every single play. They're looking at his impact, everything, stats, everything is taken into account when you know they're making, they're having these these rankings here. And Jerry Tillery, guys, is very very low on the ranking list. And again, this is not everything. Numbers are not everything. All that stuff is not everything. But if you're a fan and even if you're casual and you can see 
he does not have the impact that he should be having, right, uh, you know, at this point in his career. Um, so I, I personally do think that it's time for the Chargers to move on from him, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I think he can get a fresh start somewhere else. There are several other teams who run um, defensive schemes that can, you know, like I said, they can really show off what he does well, right? He rushes the passer well. Um, you know, he's able to get pressure, right? He does, you know, he he, he plays well in, you know, the, the, the box area, you know, little screens and stuff like that. You know, he does... He does well with, with, with that type of stuff. And there are several teams who play that that that, that scheme of defense where he, he can, you know, and not even be a star, but, you know, he can be more productive and he can give a team way more value than he's giving the Chargers right now. So, um, again, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think, you know, the Chargers should, should move on. And I think he should want to move on as well, too. And, you know, hopefully get a better opportunity, you know, hopefully be able to improve more and, you know, hopefully to – you know, be able to give his new team some some good value, um, and you know, hopefully have a, a a productive career. You know, hopefully his career is not cut short. Um, you know, hopefully this stuff doesn't you know discourage him from continuing to improve, continuing to improve at his craft, continuing to understand uh, understand the game better. Um, you know, just doing everything better. So I hope I hope that he does. Um, I hope that he does get his act together a little bit. Um, and I hope that he's able to show other teams that he is um, an asset and that he could be an asset to them. But I kind of just wanted to cover it. Again, this is not surprising news to anybody. Um, you know, this this hasn't been the best marriage, you know, of team and player. Um, but it happens sometimes, right? This is a, a league, 32 teams, uh, 53 players, right? And what, 10 to 12 um, practice squad player. So sometimes you just don't have the best fit and it's okay. You know, there's no need to, you know, whine or complain or, you know, put anybody down. It's just, you know, you cut your losses, move on. And then hopefully, you know, your opportunity, your next opportunity is your best opportunity. And I think that's, that's where we're, we're at with Jerry Tillery, but you know, Hey, um, but hit the comments. Let me guys know what you think about Jerry Tillery getting his fifth year option declined. Um, I know it's not going to be a surprise for a lot of you, but, you know, just hit the comments. Let me know what you think. Um, but that's pretty much all I got on this one, guys. Um, please, 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 please don't forget to like this video. Um, please consider subscribing to the channel if you're not. Uh, I'm going to have much more content coming out very, very soon. Um, and that's pretty much all I got. Thank you guys for the support. And until next time.